Okay, so in the previous video, we went ahead and completed our navigation for our website here, which we have right here. Now, in this video, we're going to go ahead and continue on, and we're going to get started on the hero section. So let's head over to our index.html and get started with that. So to begin, I want to go ahead and collapse the header tag here. And below that, we're going to have a new comment, and we're going to call this hero. Now, for this section, we're going to use a section tag, and we're going to give this a class of hero. And we're going to go ahead and open this up. Now, inside of this hero section, we're going to have a div with a class of container. And we're also going to create a new utility class called flex row to go ahead and put this div or make this div a flex row. Now, inside of this flex row, we're going to have two columns. We're going to have the left-hand side, and we're going to have the right here, which has our image. So let's go ahead and do another div and give this a class of left. Now, inside of this left class, we're going to go ahead and give uh, an H2, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this in here. So it says, we provide solutions for your business. Now, we have a line break right here, and then we have a span and an uh, underline tag uh, wrapping the solutions. And what did I just do? Let's not do that. And then we also have one more line break, and then we have for your business. And that's going to give us the desired result that we have right here. Now, oops, that's the wrong way. Uh, moving along here, we need to do a div for the class, or div for the buttons. So we're going to do div.buttons, and we're going to have two anchor tags in here. So let's do that, and one more. And we're going to go ahead and give these pound signs for right now. We'll come back and get to those later. And then we're going to have a class of btn for this one, and we're going to have this say get started. And then we're also going to have this one have a class of btn, but also a class of btn light and we're going to have this one say our services okay so that is the html for the left hand side now the right hand side is fairly easy we don't need to wrap it in a div it's simply going to be an image tag and we can go ahead and look for that image by typing an image and a forward slash and what we're going to be looking for is the intro image dot svg now if i save that and go take a look and we have this right now. So let's head over to our style sheet and get started on styling this section up. Okay, so to begin our styling, we're gonna go ahead and work on a few of the utility classes we went ahead and introduced in this section, which is going to be Flex Row, BTN, and BTN Lite. So to begin, let's get Flex Row out of the way, which is gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna go ahead and do Flex Row, and we're gonna say Display as Flex, and that's going to be it. Now for the button, we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to give us a cursor of pointer. We're going to say display inline block. We're going to give this a padding of 14 pixels on the top and bottom and 40 on the left and right. We're going to give this a default background color of 007BFF, which is going to be a nice blue. We're going to give the text color a color of white, so FFF. We're going to give a border radius here of 45 pixels. Then we're going to do a border. Oops, what's this do? Border. We're going to do two pixels, solid, and we're going to give this a transparent color for the time being. We're going to give this a font weight of 600 to make it a little bit thicker. And then a transition here of 500 milliseconds ease and all. Okay, so that's going to be the default button uh, styling here. Now, when we hover over it, we want to go ahead and also add some changes to this. So how we can do that with SCSS, we haven't talked about this yet, is you can use the dot dot, or sorry, you want to do an and sign dot dot, and then just say hover. So right now, this is going to toggle the button on hover. And in here, we want the background color to change to transparent. And then we want the border color to be white. Okay? And that's going to be it for the button. Now, let's go ahead and tackle the BTN light, which is just going to be a few properties that's going to alter it from our default button here. So, what we want to go ahead and do is give this a background color of transparent which is going to override the background color we set right here and then we also want to give it a border color off the bat of white so actually not border we want to do border 
color and we're going to give that a color of white. Now the same thing we want to do is we want to do our and sign and we want to do hover. And in here we want to say on hover we want to make the background color to that same blue we had up here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that in right here to save some time. And then we also want to make the border color transparent. So if I go ahead and save this, it's not going to look any better right now, but you can see when I hover over it, it turns to white. And when I hover over this one, it turns to blue. You can't see it because the background color is uh, white at the moment. So let's head back here and actually begin to work on the styling for the hero section itself. So we'll do another comment here and say hero, and then we're going to target the hero section. And inside of this to begin, we're going to be using this section class right here, Hero, to display our background image. So let's head back over here and get started on that. So first off, let's add some padding to this of 150 pixels on the top and bottom, zero on the left and right. And let's go ahead and get that background in here. So we're going to use the background property and we're going to go ahead and say URL. And how we're going to get to this is we're going to say backslash image. And we need to put some parentheses around this. I forgot. So image. And we're looking for intro bg.png. And we want to add a few more properties to this. So we want to center this. And then we want to put it to the bottom. And then we also want to say no repeat. So if we go ahead and check this out now, you'll see that we now have the background image. And we can see our buttons, um, how we styled them with those utility classes. Okay. So we still got to do a few more things here. We want to go ahead and say background size and set that to cover. We want to display this as flex uh, display. Uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, we'll just display this as flex. And then we want to justify the content to the center. Okay. Now, if we look at this now, not much is going to change, uh, but let's go ahead and continue to work on this. So let's go ahead and target the flex row. So we created this utility class down here, but we want to go ahead and add some additional uh, properties to this class only in this section. So let's add some padding to this of zero on the top and bottom, 32 on the left and right. We're going to add a gap of 32 pixels, which is going to separate the column uh, between the image and the text on the left. And then we want to do a flex direction of column because we're going to be using a mobile first approach here. And then we're going to add a media query to go ahead and set it back to a row. And then we want to align the items to the center. Now, if we add our media query here, so I'm going to do at media and we're going to say min width at 1000 pixels. So for all these media queries, this is what I found to work the best throughout the whole project. So I'm only going to say this once. If you want to change this value or you feel it looks better if you change it to 900, you're more than welcome to do that. This is just what I found worked best. So what we're going to say here is by default, anything lower than 1000 pixels the uh, all these uh, styles are going to be in effect now anything above 1000 pixels we're going to have it be uh, these styles here which the only thing we're going to change here is the flex direction and change it to row so with this being said the only thing that's going to be overridden from our default here is the flex direction so if we save that and take a look um, it's starting to look a little better. We have everything aligned to the center, uh, but right now the image is taking over everything. So we want to go ahead and fix that, uh, but we'll go ahead and get to that in just a moment. So moving on here, let's go ahead and style our H2. So we're going to go ahead and say H2. Now we did do some default styling here up at the top. Um, now for most of the headers, we will be using this, but in this case, I am going to add a few different styles to this particular H2. Uh, most of the time they will be this right here, which is why I created it. But for this section, we need to make a few adjustments. Now we're going to have the color be white. And then we want to do a font size of 40 pixels. And once again, we're going to be changing this using a mobile first approach and a media query. And we want to put the margin bottom to 32 pixels. And we're going to text align this to the center. Now we're going to add another media query here. And it's going to be the same thing, min width 1000 pixels. And we're going to say text align initial and then font size 
40 Eight pixels so once again the only thing really being overridden here is the text align and the font size so if we come back over here now you'll see that it's white and it looks a lot better now if I go ahead and I inspect this so what we're doing here is you're gonna see it still not look correct is that we have it switching from a uh, flex row to a column when it gets below the media query we have set of 1000 but right now you can see that since the image is blowing out of the container it doesn't look great so let's just go ahead and fix that really quick to uh, stop that from happening so I'll just simply say for right now we'll add some additional styling to this later or image and just make this a width of 50 percent and you know what we'll just style this up now so we're gonna give this a display of flex and let's go ahead and give this a flex one a width of 50 percent and we're going to give this a order of one now i'll go ahead and explain why we're doing this in a moment but we're going to have a, me have a media query here as well and we're going to do the same thing we're going to say min width and we're going to say 1000 pixels and we're going to go ahead and change the order here to two now, like I said, I'll explain why we're doing this order one and then order two on screens above 1000. But now if I come over here and I go ahead and close out of this, you should see the image is now an appropriate size and it's starting to look a lot better. But now if we shrink this a little bit more, you'll see that um, it still needs a few tweaks. So let's head back over to our style sheet and begin with that. So let's go ahead and actually style up our left div here. So let's go ahead and target left. Okay, and in here we're going to go ahead and give this a flex of one. So we already, okay, so flex of one. Sorry, I'm looking at two different things here. So we're going to have this have a order of two by default. So right now you can see the image is a order of one on screens less than 1000 uh, pixel viewport. And this will be order two. And then we want to set the justify content to the center. And then we also want to align items to the center. And then we're going to do the same thing we did here on our media query to save some time. I'm going to copy and paste this in. On anything above 1,000 pixels, we want to set the order of this to 1. So the reason why we're doing this is because I like the image on the top when it is in a mobile view. And then we want the image to go back to the right hand side or order number two when it's on a desktop view. So having that order property on display flex gives us ability to reorder these even though it should go the content on the top and the image on the bottom. But we can change that using the order property. So I think that looks a lot better. Now, the last thing we really need to adjust here is our buttons because as you can see, when we go ahead and get to a smaller screen, they stack and we want that to be centered and we need to add some margin and stuff to those. So let's go ahead and work on that. Now, below left, we can go ahead and just tackle this by calling out the buttons class here. And we want to say we want to display this as flex. Now, we could use our flex bro uh, utility class but we don't need to you know clutter up our HTML with all that I use that pretty much to just show us in the HTML you know what is going to be a flex row and not from the bigger perspective uh, I don't want to clutter all our HTML with utility classes and that's just the way I prefer to do it now it's not wrong doing that it's not right you can you know do it any way you choose but just wanted to go ahead and point that out there's many ways to do things and this is just the way I prefer to do it so we're gonna go ahead and display this as flex and say flex direction column and we're going to align the items to the center so right here this is all of the styling we're gonna be using for the mobile and once again we can just go ahead and do our media query here and we're gonna change this one up a little bit from the previous media queries here and actually no we're not this one's going to stay at 1000 i'm getting ahead of myself so once it gets back to a min width of 1000 we want to go ahead and change this back to a flex direction of row now we also want to do a little bit of styling to the buttons that we created in here which are these so what we can do is a little bit of nesting and we can say dot btn and we want to text align this to the center we want the width of these buttons to be 200 pixels fixed and we want a margin bottom to separate those when they're stacked of 16 pixels and we're also going to add another media query of 1000 pixels and change the margin 
right to 16 pixels. Okay. Now, if we save this, we should be all set with this section. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how it looks. And right now you can see that when we get to a smaller screen, they are now stacked by default. So when I go ahead and shrink this down, it looks a lot better. Now, if we go back up to a desktop size, nothing should really have changed and it doesn't and it still looks great. So that is going to be it for this section and this video. Now, in the next video, we're going to work on the about us.